Hello everybody, my name is Pablo Carpintero. I am the creative director of an advertising agency based in Los Angeles. We work mostly for multicultural markets in the US and some parts of Latin America. Um, today we want to talk about multicultural markets in the US and how to reach them and who was my experience with them. Experience with them. For the beginning, what are the multicultural markets in the US and markets in the US and how to reach them? Obviously, this is the formation between the African Americans that were already here plus the new immigrants in the late 1950s. That has created the new multicultural uh, uh, United States and most part of Europe too. But let's stay with the US. The US has 62 million uh, Hispanics, 41 million African American, 18 million Asians. That's a total of 131 million people in a country about 400 and something million uh, up among the 14 trillion expenditure of, of the total economy you have 1.3 trillion is the expenditure of the hispanic market 1.2 the african-american market and 1 trillion the asian american so 3.5 trillion of the total economy belongs to multicultural market that's what is important about this because we're talking about advertising and marketing and why you can take advantage of this this what language should i use to address my target in the us you can go from english and spanish to the main five languages from asia sometimes they even ask us for somali in some part of minnesota where they have a huge population <coughs> from that origin one important aspect is that language is not the most important element in our communication that is like thinking that the kitchen faucet is like a water factory and it's not it's just a mean to an end it's not the end in itself don't get me wrong nobody's gonna call a cat by whistling nobody knows why but that is for dogs but at the same time nobody in the right her mind think that a dog loves you because you know how to whistle how to whistle insights are the key but not everything roberto ocenich was a great tango singer from argentina he used to tour the world all the time. Once in Japan, they asked him, Maestro, don't you feel homesick from Argentina? And Goshenechi's answer was a great piece of emotional intelligence. Yes, but Argentina is a very nice country to feel homesick about. That triggered a, a deeper conversation. It's authenticity versus posers, equal having something to say. Do you have something to say? Because tra trust me, Tradition is a very easy way to alienate your multicultural target in an idyllic past. And purchases happen in the present, not in the past. Past. Now a little bit of history, and you can apply this to all the other markets, but let me focus on the Hispanic market because that's where I know the history. The Hispanic market started with marketing-focused agency that enjoyed their moment of relevance as far as construction and justification of the market was concerned but now <clears throat> to grow in the hispanic market you may need to add a more creative and appealing layer why because 16 percent of the u.s population is hispanic but 16 percent of the international awards recipients aren't and certainly 16 percent of advertising expenditure uh, isn't hispanic related to reach that next plateau you're gonna need to capitalize on your brand in that gap that's the business reason to embark on, on or at least to embrace the creative advertising in the Hispanic market in the US. In the US. Which is the most adequate channel to address the multicultural market? These days you don't need to rely solely in the traditional medias, meaning Univision, Bet or Telemundo. You can go through the digital and social media. And there you can address by zip code, language and personal preferences to reach exactly the people that you are building. For that, you're going to need uh, to build the right message, but more important, to trigger the proper response in the in those medias, you're going to need to have the perfect identification for those segments. segments. How should I adjust my message to get across to each segment? And here it triggers a, most, a more important conversation that is like the media all around the world is never a perfect reflection on the people that is addressing. Meaning that normally if when you see uh, research about the Hispanic market, you don't see them like at, at 
saying that they, they see themselves reflected on the media. The media is always reflecting something that you not entirely like. On top of that, you have the divisions that you have from Colombian to Puerto Rican. You have, you're going to have the division from Japanese to Korean, from Korean to uh, mainly uh, China or Singapore or Vietnam. All those divisions are going to be adding up to the class division, the snob factor, as we call it at the agency, which is upper class, lower class. So don't get messed with that. Don't get confused with that. You have a message to say, should we address a, each a specific uh, characteristic of the market? Sure, but don't get confused. You, all of them belong to that target that you need to address. To address. How far can you go from the DNA of the brand? Uh, if you're working in a corporate environment, chances are that you're gonna have the DNA of a brand written somewhere, the messaging of the brand written somewhere. And with that, you're gonna have somebody having a Spartacus moment, meaning somebody's gonna feel like he's a, the brand keeper. And that person is gonna, trigger, is gonna trigger a situation that is the brand keeper versus the brand multicultural reality. That for us has created some kind of a brand commoditization situation, meaning some kind of multicultural white labels elements. Those multicultural white label elements are, uh, you're beginning to see them repeated over and over again all over the Hispanic and the Asian market. Those are the sarapes, meaning the ponchos, uh, those are the abuelitas, meaning the grandma, or, and those are the soap operas, meaning the telenovelas. Uh, uh, authenticity trumps every day uh, the DNA of the brand, which is a construction. I'm not saying that you need to forget the DNA because you can, obviously, but you need to be able to tweak them enough so you can address that people because that people is the one that you, is going to make the purchase. Should I stay close to the general market campaign? This is a natural follow-up to the previous question about the DNA of the brand. And here is a personal example with Microsoft Argentina and probably Latin America, but we only saw it in Argentina in the, back in the day. Uh, back in the two, beginning of the 2000s, Microsoft was suffering an attempt of trial from antitrust laws here in the US. They created an advertising campaign to address that, that context for the brand. From the agents, we told them, uh, you don't have that problem here. What you really need is just to address some other issues. Because here in Argentina, the PC computers were coming by default with the Microsoft uh, Entourage already installed as a clone, as a part of the computer. It was part of the piracy uh, mindset that they, they had back in the day. Remember, if you have nothing to say, you can say nothing. But if you if the target forgets about your brand, your competitors are going to fill that gap. Or the, all the supermarkets or the port, uh, point of sale is going to fill that gap with a white label brand. It seems that planets are ready to face the client when they have to show their work for multicultural experts. Uh, the client normally has, at least here in the US, their multicultural expert. Usually it's a person with African-American, Latino, or Asian background, but no experience in the multicultural marketing. That being said, that person is going to be the local authority for them. I don't know why, and trust me, nobody have, without the proper training, has the experience and can foresee what these people can tell about their brand and what you're presenting they have become, in my experience, some kind of a uh, ismo in the communication that you had to overcome, overcome. If you have reached this far, it's because you're really interested in multicultural market. And I can't blame you because it's a huge opportunity here in the US. This is the bio. You don't need to read it now. I don't want to read it too. You can reach us if you have any further question or if you need to see our presentation capability. You can.